So we've worked with and launched kind of the, the bare bones here. Yeah, our abilities right now with CloudFormation, they're kind of sparse, but even so, what you know as of this video is actually enough to get started and going with most projects. You know, everything else from this point forward is just to make our templates more dynamic. That's really it. Now, of these concepts that we see here, functions, pseudo params, and conditions, we've actually seen one of those in passing. If you, those intrinsic functions, we worked with our first one, the ref. But all intrinsic functions are going to work this way. So here we go. We have we have just our normal property and value. You know that's going to be how it is for most things. You may have a piece of metadata and you have the property and then the value, or you have a property on an actual resource and a value. But if you want to use it with an intrinsic function instead of passing just the value, remember you open up an object. Since this is JavaScript land, you can also call it a map. <laughs> and once you do that, the first key is going to be the name of the function. And by name of the function. I don't mean whatever you want to call it. I mean one of those special functions that we took a look at and that we'll, that we'll take a look at again. And then the, the value is going to be the inputs to that function. What do you want to act on? And so for our ref function, right, this was pretty much it. We said, hey, there's a property. So for example, with the author, we had the on, in our metadata, we had the author and then we had a ref to the name of our parameter. Now, so far, we've only used it on parameters, which is why, you know, I have both logical ID of the resource or parameter, but you know, let's say we wanted to use it on our security group. Well, this is what it would look like. If we had a property, so maybe we have an EC2 instance that's asking for a security group. Well, to reference our security group, we would use a ref and just pass it the logical ID of our security group as the value and remember this is the function and this is what to act on well what's it acting on the logical id and as we'll see you know you actually as we'll see here in a second you're going to ask well how does it know to return the right thing so for example when a when an instance in cloud formation when an ec2 instance asks for a security group it's actually it actually wants the security group ID. So how do we know that this is actually going to return the right value? How do we know what ref returns? Because with parameters, it's pretty straightforward. It just returns the value of the parameter. But if we reference a, a, a resource, what's it going to return? Well, the easiest way to figure this out, <laughs> as usual, is to go to the documentation. And on every single resource that exists, there will be a section called return values. And if we click this in and go down to return values, here we see that ref, what's it going to do? Well, when you pass a ref of the logical ID of a security group, it's just gonna return the resource name. So that is, uh, <laughs> for, for our example of uh, an instance, this would, the ref would not be the appropriate function because it wants a, the security group ID. Now, speaking of which, well, actually, before we move on to it, this is how you can discover what ref will return for any given resource. So if we just open up anything here, so let's, let's open up what's something familiar. Um, let's find an S3 bucket. How about that? We'll go down to S3, Amazon S3, and then we'll open up a bucket. And in bucket, if we go to return value, sure enough, here, here, just like everything else, there is a ref, and we'll see that when you ask for a ref, it will also return a re the return value, the, the name of the particular bucket itself. But you may be thinking, so let's hop back over to our security group. You, know, you may be thinking, well, what if we want something else about the security group? Like, what if we want to know the security group ID, which is something that a lot, anything that works with security groups needs. It usually needs you to point it to its ID. Well, in this case, we would have to use an entirely different intrinsic function called function get attribute. And they actually list it right here. And so for any resource you make, if you want to get something from it, if you want to get the result from it after it's made, you're gonna do it in one of two ways. You're either gonna use ref, and hopefully it gives you what you want, and if not, you can use function get attribute to grab a specific attribute that's made available. Now we can see for security groups, there's only two, but if we look at an S3 bucket, we can see that there's a number of different things that you can grab for it. 
Now, let's take a look at the get attribute function because I want you to see that the format for working with intrinsic functions is the same, whether it's ref, whether it's function get attribute, whether it's function base 64, they all follow the same format. So here's function get attribute. So once again, for our property, instead of a value, we open up a map or object, whatever you want to call it. And the first thing is always the function name, function get at. And then the property, not the property, the value is what we want it to act on. Well, function get attribute actually requires two things. And so when a function requires multiple inputs, you don't pass just you know a string, you pass an array of things. And so for function get attribute, the first thing at once is the logical ID of the resource that you want to get an attribute from. And then the second thing is the name of the attribute. So going back to our security group example, if we wanted to grab the group ID of our security group we made, well, it would just look like this. We would pass it the logical ID of our security group, which you know we named security group. I know that that's a little vague, but this is the logical ID. If this was whatever, if we would have named this whatever, then this would be whatever. But regardless, it's just it's the logical ID. And then the second thing is the attribute group ID. And how we get that is just from the documentation. We know that under function get attribute in our security group, we can choose to get either the attribute group ID or the VPC ID. And so of course this would return the group ID. Okay, so there's actually a whole list of these functions. And we're gonna, not gonna cover all of them because once you, the hard part about intrinsic functions isn't what they do, it's, it's just getting your head around this weird, <laughs> this weird syntax that exists in JSON files uh, when you pass it to CloudFormation. But let's go take a look at those. So here I'm gonna just open up intrinsic functions and it'll always be in the CloudFormation docs under template reference and then under intrinsic functions. And if we open these, you know, there's a there's a collection here. There's not too many. Um, and that's why, you know, it, there's not a lot to them. And if, so for example, get availability zones. If we take a look at this one, you know, it's as simple as just calling the, the, the function here and just passing the region that you want to get the availability zones for. So, you know, that's why we're not gonna go through each and every one. And there's not that many. So there is another little set of functions here that are nested under condition functions. So if we open those up, these are a set of functions that you can use for control flow. So and equals if not or, and we'll see those in action here shortly. Okay, so let's hop back over the next thing that we need to talk about are pseudoparams. Now, pseudoparams or pseudoparameters, uh, they work just like parameters. And what do we do with parameters? Well, we define them and then we ref them, right? So just, again, just as a little refresher, we made a parameter and then we refed it and that's all we have to do. Well, um, that's exactly how pseudoparameters work as well. It turns out that there's a whole list of parameters that are made available to every template, like the region or the stack name. And let's actually go take a look at those. So I'm over here in the documentation. Actually, I already have it open, but to find this page, it's just in the main docs under template reference and then pseudoparameters. And we can see there are eight different pseudoparameters that are available in every template, no matter what. And right at the top here, the first example, it could not be any more clear than, you know, than it can be made. Ref, and this should look familiar, but instead of a name of a parameter, we have this special format. What'll happen if this is a pseudo param, what'll happen is when this, this little mini template is evaluated, value here will become whatever region that this stack is in. So if we scroll through, we see there's one for account ID, for notification ARNs to hook up with, with SNS, uh, for no value, this is, <laughs> actually quite useful and we'll actually use this later on. Um, the partition, you know, if you're working in a different region, you need to add that. The region, stack ID, stack name, and URL suffix. So these are ones that are available no matter what. You don't have to do anything to get them. You just use them. Okay, so even though those aren't, uh, there's not that many of them and they may not seem like a lot, you'll actually find yourself using them quite a bit. Now, the final thing for us to talk about is conditions. And these are exactly what they sound like. They're how we'll add conditions to whether resources or the properties of those resources are made. 
We can make a condition using a function and then put that condition on a resource. And, you know, if the condition's met, it will either be made or not made. So pr pretty straightforward. Now, if you're wondering why I'm not showing any examples on this slide, because <laughs> it's a lot easier to show conditions by just, you know, doing them in the code rather than me trying to walk through them. Okay, not too bad conceptually. In the next video, we'll actually use all three of these concepts in our template.